So in this question, we're given a Sturm-Louisville differential equation. Here, P, R, and Q are given functions. Then they're positive on the interval from A to B. We're asked to do two things in this question. The first part asks us to show that every solution to our ODE satisfies the following bottom line. Now here I've just suppressed the, um, uh, the arguments just to save a bit of space here. And of course by the dashes I just mean the regular derivative, uh, ordinary derivative. So the suggestion was to essentially take the differential equation and multiply through by u, and then integrate by parts. So let's give that a go. Uh, firstly, what I'm going to do is actually just rearrange the differential equation. So I've sort of got the u r lambda on one side and everything else on the other side. So our ODE is just the following. Again, I'm just going to um, suppress the, uh, the arguments of the functions involved just to save a bit of space. OK, so if I take that bottom line, multiply both sides by u, and then integrate, well, I'm, I'm definitely going to have this left-hand side on this left-hand side. And then it's just a matter of trying to come up with this right-hand side. So if I integrate from A to B, now lambda is a constant, so I can take that out the front. And integrate with respect to x. So now what, well, I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to integrate this by parts. Okay, as you can see that in there. Okay, so, uh, so let's break that up and integrate by parts. OK, so you'll see here I've got a negative negative. That'll give us that term. And then I've got that term on the end. So if I just sort of rearrange it so it's the right-hand side, I'll get the following. So as our conclusion star holds. Now the second part of this question asks you to, to hence give some sufficient conditions for every eigenvalue of our differential equation to be non-negative. So let's, let's actually look at our original differential equation. So what we're asking for now is some sufficient conditions that will um, give you a 
non zero or non trivial solution um, for positive eigenvalues. Uh, sorry, for, yeah, well, non negative eigenvalues. Okay, so we need to uh, establish some sufficient conditions here. So any ideas? What will some sufficient conditions be? Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's have a look at the thing we just proved, right? Essentially, in our assumptions, p and r are both positive uh, functions, right? So if you look um, uh, here. This integral, because r is positive, mu squared is going to be non-negative. The left-hand side of our identities um, basically dependent on the sign of, of lambda. Now the right-hand side, as you said, will be uh, non-negative. Well, under what conditions? Well, we've already assumed p is positive, so that, that term is going to be uh, non-negative. That term will be non-negative if, if um, uh, for example, if Q is positive, and all we need to do is, is sort of force that term to be uh, non-negative. So let's call this double star. So the right-hand side of double star. will be non-negative if Q is non-negative on the interval AB and if this term is non-negative. Okay? So you know this 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 uh, bottom right hand corner will involve the boundary conditions, okay, and the function p. So let's just sort of write that out a bit more. All right, so um, this will be something like so plus. Okay, so there's some sufficient conditions. Are they the best conditions? Well, no, we're not asked for the best conditions, but they're sufficient. So remember here, p is a, a, a given function. So for, for, you know, from a practical point of view, p is given, r is given, q is given, and you have some boundary conditions that are also given. <coughs> 